Every once in a while we here at Spirit and Truth Fellowship International get an email or a letter from a person who will write in and say, what is it about you Christians? And of course writing to us, they say you Christians and maybe they say this to other people too, that, that all the religions can't get along. What, what, why is it you've got to say you're right and, and other people are wrong? And isn't it true that there's, there's just there's one God and everybody's worshiping that one God in his own way and from God's perspective, hey, everybody down there worships me and therefore it, everything should be fine. And you know, that's a good question and it deserves a good answer. It really does. So this is one of the ways that I would answer that question. And I'd, uh, I'd start by way of an analogy. Let's say, for example, that there's a gigantic wilderness. And in that wilderness, there's a small group of people and they're, they're eking out a living. They're hungry most of the time. They're cold or they're wet. Um, pretty miserable existence. And, and as, they're in their, as they're traveling through the wilderness, they come upon this huge mansion. And here, here's this mansion, and it's, uh, it's, it's fabulous. It's just what they need. It's got all kinds of bedrooms, wonderful furniture, closets full of warm clothes, refrigerators full of food, and it's got a sign in the front yard, and the sign says, just for you. And so they, they get into this mansion, and they're just having a wonderful time, and they get into a discussion about, we'd like to thank the builder. We'd like to thank the one that, that made this mansion for us and made our lives so wonderful. But then they get into arguing about exactly how to do that. How do you thank the builder? And there's an atheist among them and he says, oh, you know, there was no builder. There was just lightning storms in the wilderness over a period of time, which if that sounds kind of stupid, if you think about it, the way that the atheists say that we got here was there was this explosion billions of years ago, and then there was this primordial soup, and then there were lightning storms, and here we are. <laughs> and if you want to know more about evolution, there's, uh, you can contact us, or there's certainly ministries that deal with evolution. But basically everybody else there agreed that no, there was a creator, there had to be a creator, someone who made this mansion, and they, they argue about how to thank him. And the reason they're arguing is because he didn't leave them any instructions as to what to do or how to thank them, how to thank him. And, and that's not our case. That's not the position that you are, and I are in. God created us and he created this wonderful world for us to live in and he wants us to thank him. He wants us to worship him and he wants us to serve him. And so what he did is he sent communication to us so we would know how to do that. That's grace. That's really neat. He didn't leave us down here on earth and just say, you guys figure it out and if I don't like it, pow, you know, or whatever. No, God said, I've created you. I've created this wonderful earth. I want you to worship me. I want you to serve me and let me tell you how to do it. And then he wrote this book and it's called the Bible. And in the Bible, there are so many things that testify that the Bible is, in fact, the Word of God. In 2 Timothy 3.16, Scripture says, All Scripture is God-breathed. That the Scripture is God-breathed. And it's God's communication to us, so we'll know what to do. Now, when the Apostle Paul started writing the New Testament, as God and Jesus Christ were talking to the Apostle Paul and telling him what to write, telling him the, the doctrines of the Age of Grace, some of the critics and skeptics came by and said, Oh, Paul, you're just making this up. And here's what Paul wrote by Revelation in Galatians chapter 1, verse 11. I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I didn't receive it from any man nor was I taught it, rather I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. You see, the, the Bible testifies that it is the revelation of God. And you see that all through the scripture. In Genesis, it says, Yahweh spoke to Noah. 
Yahweh spoke to Abraham. Yahweh spoke to Isaac, to Jacob, to Moses, to Joshua, to Samuel. See, that makes perfect sense to me. If there is a God, it would, he would want to fellowship with his, his, his creation. He would want to communicate with his creation. And, and he has through history. Now, sure, there are skeptics and doubters, but that doesn't mean God hasn't spoken to people. So the, the question then that we've got to answer, and, and it's a good question, somebody would say, well, okay, yeah, well, the Bible says it's the Word of God, but how do I know that? How do I really know that the Bible is the Word of God? And that's a great question. And we've written a book of, about that called The Bible, You Can Believe It, which you can get from us. But let me talk about just some of the basics. I mean, first of all, I've already covered one, which is just the claim of Scripture itself. The Bible actually claims to be the Word of God. Then, the, the Bible has internal integrity that's superhuman, that is a testimony to the authorship of God. The Bible as you and I have it today was written over a period of about 1,500 years by about 40 different writers, and yet it's internally consistent no contradictions, no inaccuracies. That's superhuman. That's a very good testimony that this is not the work of men, but the work of one God. You know, there's the historical accuracy of the document. The, the Bible has things about history that historians themselves were completely unaware of. For example, like Genesis talks about the Hittite nation. People didn't believe in the Hittites. The, the historians said, we've never heard of the Hittites. The Genesis, they, they just made them up. And then what do we find? The Hittite nation. Or take Daniel chapter 5, says Belshazzar was a king of Babylon. According to the historical records that we dug up out of Babylon originally, uh, early archaeology, there was no Belshazzar. So they said, oh, the Bible's wrong. Then later on, history and the historical evidence proves that, wow, there really was a Belshazzar. There's historically verifiable prophecies, and we at Spirit and Truth have done a lot on the prophecies in the Bible that the pro prophetic word tells the future, that, that God is a God who can tell the future, and he does so in prophecies. And the Bible is the only religious document with historically verifiable prophecies showing that our God exists and that he knows the future and we have material on that that's available to you. And then there's the scientific evidence. You know, there's a lot in the Bible about science that scientifically the people of biblical times didn't know. Like in the book of Job, for example, in uh, Job 26, verse 7, saying that God hung the earth on nothing. He just suspended it in space. It, at a time when some people thought the earth was on the back of a turtle or held up by Atlas or whatever. And there's other pieces of scientific evidence in the scripture that I simply didn't know at the time the Bible was written, but God, who created the heavens and the earth, knew. So God then authored this book. And in it, one of the things he pointed out, gee, no news to us, is that we've sinned. And we've sinned against him. We have, we have erred against our God. We have sinned against our God. And so God then has provided a way that that sin can be atoned for. And he's told us what we need to believe and what we need to do to serve him and worship him and thank him. You know, unlike the builder of the house in the woods who didn't leave any communication, God has told us how to thank him. Now, Sure, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of books out there that disagree and a lot of people that are skeptics and doubters who want to come up with their own opinions. But the fact of the matter is that the Bible is the Word of God. It proves itself to be the Word of God. And it has the directions that you and I need to follow if we're going to obey and please God and receive everlasting life. <laughs>
free And sometimes my feet don't wanna carry 